chemicals are fun to play with. However, they're dangerous. They need safety gear. And it goes without saying, do not try this at home. All the substances I'm dealing with here are fairly dangerous. So again, do not try this at home. Now, the safety gear should be appropriate for what you're working on, but I actually don't need the helmet. Now, we're working with chlorine gas today, and the problem with chlorine gas is it vaporizes, so it can get into your lungs and face. So this will help keep it off our face. This will help keep it away from our eyes. Unfortunately, the safety gear I was trying to use is in a vehicle that someone took. And so the weather's perfect right now for doing this. I have to work with what we got. So, what exactly is it that I'm doing? You may have noticed there are cans in front of me. Various different soft drinks in a bottle. Now, you can get a very interesting reaction from mixing certain things. Everyday household objects. Now, when doing something like this, you should always have the safety gear, and you should do it in a safe location, outside, or ventilated, wherever it's safest. Now this here, everyday pool chlorine. Pour it into this bottle here. A nice amount. Put that down. Seal this up. And we move the camera closer. Now again, do not try this at home. This is actually far more dangerous than you think. Try to be safe. Stay away from the chemical reaction that's about to happen. Don't want to breathe this in at all. Coca Cola, pool chlorine. Mix the two together. And wait a second. And then, hey presto! You get an absolutely terrifying reaction. Now, if I carefully move this out of the way, so that is Coca Cola. We did that with. Now, we take Pepsi. Apparently, the Yukon's choice. Different bubbly, lovely drink, or some people think. And I'm curious if they'll have a similar to or no reaction whatsoever as the Coca Cola did. And that was the Pepsi. Okay then, next we have Sprite. Lovely Sprite. Now why I keep moving is because that is chlorine gas coming off there. It is mixed with quite a bit of water because there's instant boiling happening to the liquids I pour inside. But still, it is not very pleasant to breathe in and should be avoided. Well, the Sprite was actually quite violent there. It's still reacting. That's a little scary. Finish that off a little bit. Burn down the chemicals. And finally, we have the Mountain Dew. A little carbonation going on there. All right, bottoms up to the Mountain Dew now. Green drink of the mountainside. Our reaction was quite violent. Just moving the cup around. Cool. Just bubbling over and reacting what spilled out. 
Now, of course, because I'm an idiot, we have to do things bigger. A very large pickle jar. We put another large amount of chlorine in here. At this point, I want to point out, don't play with chlorine. It's a poisonous substance and it's also acidic. It's quite bad for your skin, breathing in the fumes, and operating around. I am only touching it with gloves. I'm very much avoiding touching it with my bare hands. Don't play with chlorine. I live dangerously. Not too dangerous, though. And I do plan to keep on living, not get something horrible. Oh boy. Brown, frothy juice. Enjoyed by millions. A little bit of foam in it. Alright. Bottoms up. Now a lot of the white stuff that Gain left behind is mostly calcium, and we'll get into why that is later. It's rather interesting. And that is why we're doing this outside. There's a lot of gas going on in there. Very poisonous. Chlorine gas. We don't want to inhale this. It's a very toxic substance. There's a whole bunch of vapor still trapped in the bottle because it's heavier than air. In no case with this big bottle, has to be quite warm as well to the touch. This reaction has a lot of heat to it. A whole lot of heat going on. Do not do this as your volcano experiment. Stick to vinegar and baking powder. Now the final thing I wish to attempt, probably the stupidest thing I could do with this whole situation, is attempt to seal this reaction within the jar. And for all the stupid things I've done in day, this is the one you should not do the most. I'm quite curious. What will happen, basically? What the hope is, it's all the L2. Close that on top. Volatile chemical reaction is going on. Well, that was interesting. And realize how much force there was in that, I should not have used the glass jar. I don't know where the lid's gone. It left orbit. I did not hear it come down. Um. Wow. Okay, I'm not doing that again. Crazy reaction I thought it would be. And all I can hope for is that my mother does not end up watching this video. Basically, I'm saying do not do this. At all, actually. Oh god. Now, none of these drinks are no longer drinkable, and I wasn't going to drink them anyways, as quite nasty stuff contained inside them. I mean, it reacts like this with chlorine, and I know, well, that's the chlorine doing most of the work, but still, something has a reaction like that. And how much do you want to be putting that into your body? And this isn't a case of health and saying, oh, this is all happening you play in your body. But what I am saying is don't eat chlorine and then put this in your body. I mean, don't eat chlorine in general. Chlorine is a highly toxic substance used for killing things and cleaning. And you shouldn't eat it. It's acidic, corrosive, very dangerous. It's a highly volatile chemical. You don't want to abuse it. You don't want to play games with it. But it's very interesting that this reaction happens with every single drink. We're going to get into why that is. Now, although I'm not a chemist, I happen to know a few details. And research is a relatively simple process to figure out why a thing is going on in curry. Alright, so let's get into what's going on. Most pool chlorine is a mix of chlorine and calcium called calcium hypochlorite, which basically means calcium chloride. Now, Coca-Cola, or most of these fizzy drinks anyways, have a chemical in them called phosphoric acid. It gives them a slight of a sugary, tangy taste. I'm actually not 100% what it's there for, but it might help with carbonation. Anyways, 
When this acid is added to the calcium hypochlorinate, it produces a reaction where the calcium and the chlorine unbind from each other and bind with the water within the Coca-Cola. So this produces a lot of heat, and this heat then causes the substance to boil and it mixes faster and faster. Then the gas is released as boiling water vapor into the air, and it is mixed with chlorine. It's not actually pure chlorine gas coming out, but it's quite a bit of chlorine gas involved with the water. And so it's producing a lot of heat, it's boiling the water away. So what we're left with in that white substance is basically chlorine powder mixed with a whole bunch of the other chemicals that were in the Coca-Cola, as well as just some liquid that didn't completely boil away. And there's a little bit of chlorine left. But the acid is basically pulling the chlorine off the calcium and turning it into a vapor that's binding to the water and going up in the air. Pretty cool. Well, that's fun.